I feel we should continue with promoting and living our core values. When you look at academic freedom, integrity, quality, and international collaboration, those values fully align with sustainability. And I feel if we continue on the path of those values, we can contribute in a meaningful way to sustainable development. Yeah, I think the, the most important thing that needs to keep happening is for us to prioritize education and to think of it as an important societal good. But I think in terms of our contexts um, on, on this continent and in the world, we have to think carefully about what that means and we have to be able to query the foundations of the university um, as, part of, as part of doing that. I think for a really truly sustainable world, uh, one of the strengths that higher education institutions really have is that collaboration and that international exchange. Um, from early on, we acknowledge the value of really talking to each other, listening and learning together. I think this is something that, especially in these days, um, in these times today, is utterly important. In order to achieve sustainability, higher education institutions shall aim to train uh, young leaders who can go out into society and contribute to sustainability. And these days, many institutions across the globe have started to do that. Uh, but to make this more effective, it is crucial to focus on learning processes and learning environments, which are also termed as pedagogies in higher education institutions, as moving towards sustainability is not possible with the current transmissive approaches, because these transmissive approaches cannot equip students to deal with complex sustainability challenges. I think uh, the most uh, significant developments that have taken place in education in different parts of the world and specifically in my context in India is, for example, to enable um, uh, the right to education to become a legislation. And I think there are every uh, there are attempts to dilute this, but it's important to uh, continue this with uh, with a greater input in terms of sustaining it. Uh, questions of environmental education, questions of climate action related to sustainability of the environment and the planet itself have come into the space of curriculum and I think these need to be strengthened. In other words, we are talking about uh, the human dimension, we are talking about human values, human dignity and more importantly how human beings can live together in peace and harmony. Uh, that is to me the same way. Uh, if anything that goes along those lines, whatever we do, and we can justify it, it is human-centric, it is for the good of human being, regardless of where you are or who you are, uh, I think that can continue. But it's also important, I think, for higher education to think transnationally as well as locally, and we need to continue to engage with technology, which reaches the unreached and activates people. So one example that I think is important from Rhodes is like the courses for teachers. Sustainability starts with teachers, which um, connects with the SDGs and links them to teachers and teachers learning and practice. And um, the kind of initiatives such as the centers of excellence, uh, which create regional networks. So across Africa, but across the world, which are very important ways to drive forward change, I think, in those areas. One would be to make it easier to experiment, to try new things, which of course risks failure. So we need to remove the, the pain of failure if we want to try new ideas. In terms of reinvention, we can try to empower students. We have lots of good ideas and lots of young people in our higher education institutions, and we should use their ideas to make a difference in the world. That also goes for staff. It's not just faculty and professors who have brilliant ideas about the future. Staff do too. They might have more effective ways to do things, more efficient ways to do things and we can use all of their ideas. Well, if we look at higher education, I think at many places, um, we still have study programs that are very much disciplinary oriented that happen in quasi silos. 
Um, and I think it's really important that we also have the, the cross-cutting interdisciplinary components in all of the study programs. So this is not to say that we don't need a, a sound disciplinary education. I think that's very important to have that. But every student should really have the chance and be forced to think beyond their, their discipline and also kind of think in, in systems and connections to, to other disciplines and most importantly to challenges of the real world. My mother and my father, the first in their, in their families to go all the way to university. And at the time, you could see the production of an elite that came out of, of those who went to university that in many ways were supposed to um, replace the elite that the colonialists were. Um, when we fast forward now to my generation, there's still huge classism in terms of education, who has access to it and who doesn't. Of course, we all want to be part of and create a, a better future, but in the interest of sustainability, I think we have to really think carefully about the aspects of inclusion, especially in the, in the African context. Quizá el, el mayor problema al, a la que se enfrentan las universidades eh, es la resistencia al cambio. Es decir, la universidad es una de las instituciones más antiguas eh, y, y, y más estables y, y producir cualquier cambio que, que vaya a, a las raíces eh, del, del funcionamiento en, en docencia, en investigación, en la propia gestión de la universidad, eh, se encuentra con unas barreras eh, enormes. ¿no? Yo creo que eh, si hay que pedir eh, un cambio en las universidades es una mentalidad eh, diferente para hacer que unas instituciones que son históricas, pero que en su base de planteamiento son insostenibles, apuesten claramente por cambios que eh, nos dirigen hacia una sociedad eh, y hacia una universidad mucho más eh, sostenible y que apuesta por un futuro eh, mejor para todos. There are a lot of academic silos within universities that prevent professors and students from working together towards those genuine collaborations that will move the university community and the community and the surrounding local communities towards sustainability. The situation at universities right at the moment, let's say in Germany, with and scarcity of opportunities for young people to um, pursue their PhDs, of getting a first job with these short contracts, with the insecurity in the system, we are really lacking sort of our, or we are not, we are not living up to the responsibility we have in building an environment that really empowers people and gives them sort of the, the freedom for creativity to contribute to solutions for a more sustainable world. And I think this is what is much most needed right at the moment. And we are we keep forgetting about that. We are having this idea of competition to bring out the best of everybody, but we are missing sort of that caring environment that really by, by some sort of um, security and stability is an, is an important driver and enabler of creativity. what we need to do is just start sharing. We need to start sharing and learning across countries, across regions of the world, across different knowledge types. Um, so I think, you know, the supportive structures to enable those um, types of processes really need to be rethought. So what are the incentive mechanisms? What are the types of resourcing that needs to happen to, to start connecting all of these different um, kind of knowledge types and knowledge holders and ideas um, and inspiration from all corners of the world? We live in a world now that is, um, has become more complicated, more difficult. There are conflicts. Um, in Eastern Europe, we see the war in Ukraine now. Uh, we have a terrible relation between Europe, the West and Russia, but we also don't have the best relation with China. And I think, which is also partly uh, due to the pandemic, there's not enough communication. Um, we don't see that we have actually very similar interests in many fields, and we also have similar values in many fields. And the Sustainable Development Goals and Education for Sustainable Development is very clearly one field where we have the same interests and we have the same values. And so we should use this as a tool to come together, to talk together and to work together for, for a better future. 
The other aspect is uh, into the enhancement of indigenous knowledge in contribution to sustainable development. When you look at uh, different regions like Latin America, when you look at uh, Africa, Western Europe, they all have different, and other parts of the world, they all have different ways of enhancing sustainability. Uh, if you go to these regions, they will tell you why they would not do certain things. There were cultural values which ensured people live sustainably. So that is something we want to go back to our roots and find what can we embrace from our roots to enhance sustainability. The universities are meant to be the hubs where um, we test ideas, we generate new ideas, we try them and see what they can do for the world. Higher education has always been called upon for teaching and research. But I feel it is time to step out of the advisory role into a policy influencing role. So what I hope for is that when we negotiate plans and glo global action for the future, that higher education gets a full seat at the negotiation table. The, the most other important thing is that we need to release uh, the discourse on rights, freedoms, capabilities, and capability development from uh, rhetoric and instrumentality. We have a lot of work that needs to be done. We have a lot of people willing to do it. We need to empower them and tell them to go. Mm -hmm.